Today here on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. Yes, it's another crossover. You thought we were done with these. We're not, but there's a reason for it, unfortunately. Today we're looking at the 2018 Chevy Equinox. This is the two liter turbo premier edition. Is it good? Is it worth your time? Should you consider it? That's where we'll find out here today on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So if you follow the channel for a while, you'll know that we are extremely tired of crossovers. We think there are better options, but this is what a, America and most of the world are moving to, so you gotta do it, right? We had a little more uh, reason to do this particular crossover because our personal car is essentially dead. Or at least when they tell you that it's a little over $6,500 to fix the car, and that's about what the car is worth, you decide, well, maybe not. And so didn't have anything scheduled and for reasons, and all of a sudden you need a vehicle. You take what you can get, and thanks to our friends at ESI uh, we're, and Chevrolet, we're able to get behind the wheel of this uh, Equinox on about zero minutes notice. So what do we think about it in general? Well, we'll get to that, I guess. Uh, this is the all-new, completely redone Equinox, competing in pretty much the, uh, not pretty much, the most highly contested market there is for new vehicles. Where it used to be the mid-size sedan was where the volume is, now it is sort of the mid-size crossover. All you need to know is that uh, Toyota sells something like 400,000 RAV4s a year, uh, Honda's moving close to that in CRVs, and uh, Chevrolet's moving well over 300,000 Equinoxes a year, and uh, across the line, right? That's where the volume is, that's where people are buying. Again, why, I don't know, but it is what it is, so let's just move forward with it. Point one, the new Equinox is miles better than the old one, okay? It's just, there's no comparison to how much better this is to the old one, and it should be, with the amount of money that was put into it, how old the other old platform was. In general, it's a good car, a good vehicle. And I'm going to put a big caveat on that, because we're gonna to get to the price, which is a problem partially. So here's how we'll deal with this. If I didn't look at the price of the car, or the vehicle, I may call it a car and get over it if you have a problem with it. It's all right. Um, the materials in here are fine, though certainly not as good as others in class, which again be comes to a point uh, of, of price. But it's quiet, it rides well, it has some really good technology, which I do want to uh, touch on here in a moment. It drives fine. It has one of our favorite features, which is a true fold flat second row. And that's just because we have uh, a large dog and it makes it easy to put the dog in and out, which we did very briefly. And um, you know, she could fit back there, not well, but because it's height wise in the back, it's not ideal for her, but you know, she dealt with it. Um, in, again, in general, room is good. Front seat room is is very good. You know, it's fine. Although the the dead pedal for the driver seems a little high, so like knee feels a little bent more than it should be. But that's a very particular item. Uh, back uh, second row back seat room is absolutely fine with uh, me at five ten sitting behind myself. So room there is great. Uh, room in the back is is good though not exceptional. 
again, we mentioned that the load floor is a little higher than we thought, thought it could be, um, or should be. Sorry, I'm trying to find an exit here, and um, it's not where I thought it was. And it's also raining, which creates its own problems. But uh, again, so that load floor is a little higher than what we thought it would be. Uh, measured it, it's like 32, 30, 31, sorry, 31 and a half inches high. Uh, if I have a picture that works, we'll roll it in right here. And it, it appears to be much higher than it is based off of the steps we used to load our dog, where they were actually fairly steep trying to get her in this one, yet in my wife's uh, Ford Edge, there's, she has much more runway to get up and the, the angle's not near as bad. So I thought the floor was higher than it was. It measures about the same, it just angles. I do want to circle back to materials really quickly. They're fine. They're okay, uh, a lot of hard plastics, some soft touch, and you know, it's, it's not bad. It's okay. The, um, one of our, always our uh, personal things is the, uh, the center console where you might rest your knee. It's, it's hard plastic, uh, especially in premier trim that really should be padded. Although we can find kind of a, a nook in there to kind of rest our knee and it's not quite as bad. Uh, seat material is okay. Um, this one is because it's Premier and it has the Comfort 2 package. It has heated and cooled seats. It has a heated steering wheel, which has been nice because we're uh, well into fall here and mornings have been down in the 30s, so it's just nice. Yeah, it makes things a little nicer. Uh, heated seats work okay. Uh, automatic climate control. This has Apple CarPlay, which works okay. Um, we have a history of electronics not working well with our electronics. So this isn't the first Apple CarPlay system we've used that has issues uh, with our phone. Sometimes it'll recognize it, sometimes it won't. For no, for no apparent reason. Um, you plug it in and it doesn't recognize it. You shut everything off, open the door, get out, close the door, get back in, turn it on, still doesn't work. Unplug it, plug it back in, now it works. Again, no rhyme or reason, it's just it just is, and we've learned to deal with it over the years. But once everything's up and running, it seems to be just fine. Uh, just using the Chevy MyLake, it's okay. Um, it's It works just fine. If you're not used to anything else, you won't notice a difference, you won't care. Is it the best? Eh, it's kind of on par with everything else that's out there right now. Uh, this does have the Bose sound system in it, and it's all right. You know, the, the old adage, no highs, no lows, must be Bose kind of goes with this for most people won't notice the difference uh, most people won't care they're just hauling their kids and they're listening to whatever satellite radio or some other low fidelity uh, system where it probably doesn't matter to them so it's good they think Bose is good let them believe marketing hype but not reality uh, a couple other cool pieces of tech in here which are you know you think are sort of novel turn out to be pretty good in this um, Something that we experienced in Cadillac a number of years ago has made its way down to the sh this level of Chevrolet, and that's uh, the backup sensors or cross-traffic alert sensors also providing feedback in the seat. So what do I mean by that? If you're in reverse, and this is in reverse only, uh, you will get alerts in the seat, in your butt or in the bolsters, if you're getting too close to something as you're backing up and you're not paying attention to the uh, camera, or if you're looking at one side as you're backing up, uh, say out of your driveway and you see traffic there and you're about ready to go, you can get, uh, if there's other traffic coming the other way, you'll get a, a buzz in the seat and it'll alert you and that way you know to look over. Yes, you should you look both ways before. Of course you should, but most people are in a hurry and don't care, and they're just going to back out and go. It's a cool little bit of tech. It's a nice safety item, truly a nice safety item, um, and it works well. What works a little aggressively on a counterpoint is the front uh, collision alert. Uh, sometimes it's this, what seems to be the same speeds, 
this thing will go off way early. Uh, you can be going at about two miles an hour and, and what you have is like a car, car and a half distance and again, it'll go off. Other times you're following at speed uh, and you don't get the same alert. Okay, it's radar, it's electronics, it's lawyers. It's a little too aggressive for us. All right, so let's address the elephant in the room with this particular this particular model in this particular trim. This is, again, as we said, a two liter turbo uh, Premier, and it has, uh, sorry, I'm trying to, I need bifocals and I don't want them. So this has the sun sound and navigation package as well as the convenience uh, one and two packages, along with a couple other little minor things. Take a guess at what you think this car would stick her at. Now, without, seriously, for the for five days, yeah, for five days of driving this, I didn't even look at the at the uh, at the sticker, and I'm thinking, okay, this is about thirty four, thirty five thousand, and at that price, okay, it's, it's reasonable. It's it's about what you'd expect. Nope, this particular vehicle, as stickered MSRP three nine six six five, that's a big no go. Now. That said, looked up a number of Chevy dealers in this area and in other areas of the country as well. Wisconsin, Kentucky, New Jersey, uh, California, and Arizona, just to get a general idea of what everyone else is charging for this. And some people are actually asking MSRP. And if they can, and if those dealers can get them, got this. Uh, others are already offering three, four, and five thousand off the sticker. So at 35, if you can get it with, you know, negotiating dealer down and incentives and things like that, I think it's fine. It stacks up well. At just shy of 40 grand, no, that is a definite no-go. This is a good vehicle. It is miles better than the one it replaces, but it is not a $40,000 vehicle, and I don't care what things cost in today's world when it comes to new vehicles. At 40 grand, no, it's overpriced. You're gonna be better served looking at uh, Kia, uh, Hyundai, Honda, to, to be, you know, just off the top of my head. RAV4 is, eh. Um, I would even, you know, you could even look at something like a Subaru Outback and, and probably be better served with that at, you know, if you're thinking about paying 40 grand. The others are much better value for money. Again, at 35, it's fine. Uh, you, you'll be able to drive this thing for 10 years and 200,000 miles and probably have few worries about it. So overall, 2018 Chevy Equinox. Do we like it? Yes, because it's a significantly better vehicle than what it replaces. And in general, it's good. This particular model as it sits and as it's option, no, a base premier, like if you're just getting the premier, uh, two liter turbo premier, it's about 33.5. Okay, yeah. If you can skip some of the option packages and again, 35 and then negotiate it down, then I think you're getting very good value for money. Again, your value for money and your results were, are gonna be based on how much you can negotiate the price of this. And if you can get it down, good, you should drive it. Even if you're not thinking about buying this, I think you should take one for a test drive and sample it just to see where Chevy is in the market and use that as a measuring stick because there are a lot of people who will not look at American cars for you know, reasons that were valid five, 10, 15, and 20 years ago. But things have changed and as good as you think your uh, Korean, Japanese, or whatever other car that you are have some loyalty to, come drive this, see what it is, and use that as a baseline to see if those biases that you have still exist. Maybe they will, and maybe they won't. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and like if you know if you liked it. If you didn't, okay, we understand we're not for everyone. Uh, if you like it, share it, subscribe, and we'll see you again next time on RumbleStrip.net and 10 minute test drive.